Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in the previous video what I did was I decided to have a dual boot system where I had Windows and Linux, but I had them separated by partition and they were all on the same drive. So I showed you guys how to do that, how to boot from Windows and Linux, both on the same drive, separated by partition. That's one way to do it. Now I think a better way to do it is to give each operating system its own drive. That way if some kind of issue occurs with the one drive, your other operating system isn't going to be affected or won't necessarily be affected or there might not be issues or if you have to reformat or something like that. So in this video what we're going to be doing is looking at how to boot Linux on a completely separate drive. So over here in my computer I have one terabyte SSD, that is where my Windows operating system is and currently I actually do have Linux on that drive as well which I'm going to actually be taking off shortly. And what we're going to do is we're going to install Linux all on its own just on that SSD. So the first thing we're going to do is when we go into our desktop, go ahead and right click on the start menu and go ahead and select disk management. When you select disk management, this is going to come up and most likely you're going to get this screen that you have to initialize the disk. It says that you can use two, go ahead and select the guide partition table and click OK. It is now going to initialize that disk. So now under our disk management, it shows us here that we do have our two disks. We have our one, which is where I have my Windows, and then we also have our second one, which is where we're going to install Linux. Okay, so guys, here we are on the Windows lock screen. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a USB that has a bootable Linux Ubuntu system on it. I'm going to cut in the section from my previous video that shows you how to do that. Now, the next thing we want to do is that we're going to download an ISO file to a USB eventually. But what we want to do is first make sure that the USB is formatted correctly. So this is my USB. It's an 8 gig USB that I just plugged on in to my computer. I'm going to go ahead and right click that. I'm going to go to hit format. And then I'm going to click yes because I'm just formatting a USB here. The important thing here is you can call it whatever you want. You want to make sure this says FAT32. That's important. So FAT32. And then quick format is if you want that check, hit OK. We continue. It's going to format that real quick so that is all done. So now our USB drive is ready, our partition is ready on our main disk. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is download the Ubuntu ISO file. So you're going to go ahead and Google Ubuntu, download, and go ahead and click one of these. You want the Ubuntu desktop. Over here is the versions of Ubuntu desktop. LTS is what you want. That's long-term support. This one expires in April 2027. You're going to hit download on there. That downloads in the background. Next thing you want is you want uh, a system that can flash the image to a USB drive. I like to use Etcher. Go to go to bolena.io slash Etcher and hit download for whatever operating system you have, which is probably going to be Windows. Hit download there. Then once both of those have downloaded, you're going to go ahead and open Etcher. In Etcher, you're going to say flash from a file. The flash that you want is in my downloads, and it is this one that I just downloaded. Open, select target, this is it, 8 gigabytes. Go ahead and select that one, select one, flash. Now it's going to start flashing these. We'll see how long that takes. We'll come back once it's done. Okay, so it just finished with the actual initial part of flashing the image, and now it is doing something called validating. So the previous step probably took about 15 minutes, and the validating should be a little bit quicker. Okay, so this is the validating. It is done. So we have got our flash completed. So we are done with the etcher now. All right, so that's how you create the USB drive. Now I've taken that USB drive, I have plugged it into my computer. Now we're going to restart the computer here. And when I restart, when it gets to the section where I can start pushing buttons on my keyboard, you can push delete to go into the BIOS, but I'm going to actually push 11 to get into the boot manager because it pops up really fast, there it was. So here we are in the boot manager. As you can see, we've got the Windows, my first one terabyte, that's where I could boot to get to Windows. We've got Ubuntu, this is also on that same one terabyte as my Windows, however, this is the partition with Ubuntu on it. And then over here we have the USB that's plugged into my computer. I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. And then what we wanna do is we have the same basically installation that we saw when we dual booted off of the same drive. So over here, what I want to do is I want to do try or install Ubuntu. Okay, 
Okay, so here we are, it has booted up from the USB, and we are at the point where we can start making selections. So we can either try Ubuntu, and that's basically the end, just make it operate off of the USB, or we can go in and install Ubuntu, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to select that. I want English, so I'm selecting that, and then continue. Here you can choose some features if you just like a minimal or a normal installation. I'm gonna I would like all the extra software, so I'm gonna do a normal installation. I've heard that it sometimes causes issues if you have it downloading updates in the background while it's installing, so I'm gonna deselect that. I would also like it to install the third-party software, which requires secure boot, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick password for that. And hit continue. Okay, so when you get to this screen here, you have a couple different options. The bottom one is something else. This is where you can manually do it. When you install Linux and Windows on the same disk and you just separate them by partition, which I did it in the previous video, then that's the one you're gonna wanna select as something else because you're gonna wanna make some changes in here. However, since we have our own disk, we don't mind erasing it and we just wanna have our Linux installed on that disk, I'm gonna go ahead and select Erase Disk and install Ubuntu. I'm going to go, to then go ahead and click Continue. Now when you get here, you can select which disk you want. So as you can see, I have two here. I have one that had my Windows on it, and then I had the second one that I just installed. The same size, the same name, the same everything. Now they are named different. One is a zero here, and one is a one right here. But then one way that you can tell is that when I select this one, you see here one partition will be deleted. So that's going to be my new disk. If I select the other one, it's going to tell me that seven partitions are going to be deleted because I have seven partitions on the other disk where I have Windows on it. So that's going to be it. However, if I just wanted to double check, I can go ahead and select that advanced partitioning tool here. And then that brings up all of my separate sections. So if you scroll down a little bit, you're going to look here and you're going to see Windows Boot Manager. And this is the one with seven partitions. So Windows Boot Manager obviously means that Windows is on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and select Back, because I do not want that one. And let's go ahead and erase disk and install Ubuntu. Let's go ahead and continue. This is the one partition will be deleted. That is the one that we want. Let's go ahead and say Install Now. This outlines what partitions it's going to create. And then here we go. This is just the setup. So it goes with your location. It does require you to have a name, and now it's going to start installing Linux onto that second storage drive. Okay, so here we are, we get to this message that says installation is complete. In order to use it, we've got to restart the system. So we are going to hit restart now. It tells you that you can go ahead and remove the installation medium and press enter. So I'm now removing the USB drive from my computer and hitting enter. And then in here, we're going to want to hit F11 again when we get to the boot manager so that we can choose what it boots into. Okay, so on the boot manager here, you see a couple of different options. The first one is the Windows boot manager. This is where I have my Windows installed on my first terabyte uh, disk. Now, down here, you actually see that there's two Ubuntus. The reason for that is because I still have my Ubuntu Linux partition on my first SSD, which I am going to delete eventually. But for now, what we want is the Ubuntu version that I just installed on my other SSD that is completely separate on its own, on its own drive. That is going to be this first option. The only reason I know that is because I was doing some experimenting beforehand. These are completely meaning the same thing, so we're going to go and select that first option and hit enter. Now over here pops up this screen that says that you can either have Ubuntu, you have advanced options, and then a variety of other things. What we want is just plain old Ubuntu. So we hit that one, and now it starts a booting into Ubuntu. And then here we are in Ubuntu. And now, here we are in Windows. If I go over to my disk management system, you will see that I have exactly what you might expect. I've got my disk zero. This is gonna be the Linux disk that I just installed. We've got one terabyte on there, 931.51 gigabytes. And then that's all just Linux, and then disk one, again, one terabyte, with our system C drive 
EFI system partition and the recovery partition. So everything is back to normal. I've got one operating system on one drive and the other on another.